Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you. From God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Spring is normally a time for great endings and new beginnings. It's a time for grand farewells and the initial strides of graduating students stepping out along the unknown journeys ahead. Yes, normally, spring is a time for studying the patterns of parents and their youth and the coming of age. It's a time of blood, sweat, and tears, and it's not always the young and men and women who are anxious fretting about tomorrow's final exam, what will it bring? Parents who once laughed with their sons and daughters have begun to discover a lump in their throat as they wonder, are these kids ever leaving? Parents may grow misty-eyed with the thought that a beloved child will no longer be a part of their home. But this year, they're disheartened that they are still in the house at 11 o'clock in the morning. As for their sons and daughters, the graduates of 2020, this normally would be a time of unbridled optimism, a time of great endings that make great beginnings. Unfortunately, that was not what was in store this spring. The great endings and new beginnings of our graduates were suddenly rewritten in that second week of March. As we have all discovered this year, there's so much that is still unknown and so little that can be taken for granted. In the blink of an eye, the coronavirus erupted into a global pandemic and interrupted our lives. But for the graduating classes of 2020 across this country, this pandemic came with little to no chance of having a normal ending to their senior year. Events which seem so common, so 2019, prom, late night parties with friends, graduation ceremonies and open houses disappeared. Over and over again, these graduates are being told that the springtime should not be regarded as their defining hour, but it certainly will color their perspective of the future. If there is any consolation, dear graduates, it is this. Jesus' own disciples experienced a disruptive springtime as well. On that first ascension day long ago, when Jesus returned to his Father's heavenly home, the disciples were preparing for their own great endings and new beginnings. For three years, they had been studying with Jesus. They had been rehearsing for that day that they would be sent forth to do the work of the kingdom. They, too, were dreaming dreams, and like you, they were crushed when their master, Jesus, was crucified on that long Good Friday even after his resurrection on, from the dead on Easter Sunday, his disciples wandered with him, somewhat shell-shocked, for another 40 days. For the very last hour, Jesus struggled to offer assurance to his disciples. And yet, at that last moment, they continued to wonder. Yes, they continued to be there. And then, like you, the disciples were told to stay home, stay here in the city, until you have been clothed from on high. Jesus, however, also offered three practical words of advice to his disciples, which are just as fitting for the class of 2020 as they were for the graduating class of disciples 2,000 years ago. It is practical advice for each one of us, for those preparing to leave home, to the graduates who are making plans for a new beginning, and for all of us who are experiencing the changes in our lives and careers. I might even add it is fitting counsel for anxious pastors, wondering when and how we should move on. The three words that Jesus offered are, be positive. Be prepared and be patient. Let's consider Jesus' first word of practical advice, be positive. This spring we have all learned some things about ourselves 
and some things not so positive and somewhat negative, and they don't simply go away. It said, you can tell a lot about a person by how they handle slow internet and tangled Christmas lights. Before he was lifted up, Jesus said to his disciples, you are witnesses of these things. You may have dreams for your life. Hopefully these dreams will serve you well, but part of God's dream for you is that your life will be a positive living witness of his in this world. Mind you, there will be many who will tell you to abandon the Christian faith of your youth. You will meet others who will say that the Christian faith is nothing more than a set of rules to ruin a perfectly good time. That may, that may tempt you to look upon the church and your faith as simply excess baggage, ready to let, be left behind. I hope instead that you will be like the American humorist and author Mark Twain, who once wrote, when I was 17 years old, my father was the most ignorant man in the world. But when I turned 22 years, I was surprised to discover how much he had learned in five years. Dear graduates, be discerning with your faith. As you move on and start again somewhere new, search for that positive core value that's within you. Those positive core values of the Christian faith so that you may be a living and vital witness of God's dream for you and the world. Hold to your ideals. Have that dear dream. Be positive and go for it. Second, Jesus' word of practical advice was simply be prepared. As a former Boy Scout, I lived by this model. I learned as well, proper preparation prevents poor performance. Before Jesus was lifted up, he said to his disciples that repentance and forgiveness of sin are to be proclaimed to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. It's interesting that Jesus didn't command his disciples to go to the ends of the earth first. That was to be the final dream and destination. Instead, the disciples were told to begin using their time, their talents, preparing for the task in Jerusalem, in their own backyard. The disciples would certainly journey to the distant places, but Jesus' practical advice for the future is that preparation often begins now and is performed close to home. It is where we initiate new beginnings. In 1887, Thomas Alva Edison, the great American inventor, opened a new laboratory at West Orange, New Jersey. He called it his invention factory. In 1914, the laboratory burned to the ground Edison took the loss calmly. All of our mistakes have been destroyed, he said. In a new factory, we can start our experiments with a clean slate. Perhaps more remarkably, he said, I am 67, but I'm not too old to make a fresh start. Dear graduates, no one can go back and make a brand new start at this ending. You certainly, you certainly wouldn't want to go back to middle school and high school all over, over again just to get the right ending to your high school career. But anyone can start from now and make a brand new ending, a new beginning. So do the things now that will prepare you for that new future. And finally, be patient. Before he was lifted up, Jesus said to his disciples, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised, so wait and stay here. As men and women always on the move, we are constantly being pushed and urged to act. No doubt in your life, you too will have the encouragement to sprint, to catch your dreams. You will be invited to live and learn without sacrifice. Surprisingly, let me tell you, 
we learn more about ourselves in the empty time than when we are too busy to notice. Dear graduates, don't be afraid of Jesus' advice to be patient. Live with the assurance that if you live with God's dream, he will empower you with his Holy Spirit. A new and greater dream will be offered to you. The disciples waiting in Jerusalem could have never imagined the adventures and the challenges that they would counter as they began doing the work of the kingdom. And it all began as they waited patiently in their own backyard and as they were and never would be disappointed again. Yes, like Jesus' own disciples, class of 22, you have been told to stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This may not be the graduation celebration you were expecting, but this I can tell you with confidence. God has great things waiting for you. So be positive. Be prepared. And be patient. God has a dream yet to be revealed to you, for you and you alone, and for your life. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. By the wonder of virtual reality, we are now bringing together again our confirmation class as they prepare to celebrate the wonder of graduation in this year, 2020. And so we turn to our first of our graduates, Jürgen. Jürgen, you have had one of the most interesting educational journeys from the United States to India and back again. And now we're wondering what school are you graduating from this spring? Edison High School. And where will you be going in the fall, hopefully? Uh, Luther College. Congratulations, following in the footsteps, the big footsteps of your parents. Now I'd like to invite your parents, uh, Lars and Shanda, to come forward to say a few words to you. Great, Jorgen, just want to tell you how much we love you and how proud we are of you. And we wish you all the very best as you transition from high school to college and all that you have ahead of you. Um, it's such a bright future. We're so lucky to have you as our son. Mom and Dad, uh, I want to thank you for being so there for me in my life and helping me through my life and uh, loving me so much and trying so hard for me to make me succeed in life as a whole. Thank you. And so now I'd like you to take the blanket that uh, Jordan has chosen and wrap it around him. And it's a symbol of the love of this congregation. And of course, in the warm months, it may not be the right one, but for now, it is to be reminded of the great love of this congregation and of family for Jordan. And now our, our second graduate is Stephanie Amon. When she was confirmed here, this was her confirmation verse. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believe, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for the salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy 14 through 15. Stephanie, congratulations. What school are you graduating from this spring? Nova Classical Academy. Congratulations, and where are you going to be going, hopefully in the fall? St. Olaf. St. Olaf, this is good to hear. The first time I've heard this news. Congratulations. As this journey ends, now I'd like to invite your family to say a few words of encouragement and love to you as they prepare you for your graduation. Stephanie, it's been such a treasure to see you grow up over the years into a fine young lady of our household and we are thrilled at what the future holds for you. Stephanie, we love you very much. You are a blessing and you will be very much missed when you go away for college. 
And now as a little symbol of both your, the love of your family and the love of this congregation, I'd like for your mother to wrap this blanket around you to be reminded again of how much you are loved and wrapped in the love of those gathered here this day. Blessings to you, Stephanie, as you have been a blessing to others. Thank you. And now our third graduate, and that is Kate Meckles. Please come forward. Kate, what school are you going to be graduating from now this spring? Uh, Washburn. Washburn in South Minneapolis. And where are you going to be going, hopefully, in the fall? <laughs> uh, College of St. Benedict. And is there any tie to that neighborhood for your family? Uh, my dad went to St. John's. Okay. Well, now, with that, I'd like to invite your family to come forward and to surround you. Congratulations, Kate. We uh, were so excited to see what happens with uh, your new time up at St. Ben's, and um, we're looking forward to what you do. Thank Anybody you. else want to say anything? <laughs> Embarrassing for everybody. Now I want to embarrass you, and that is for you to say how much you love your family and thank them for the support throughout these years. Uh, thank you for helping me throughout uh, high school and my life. Me. And to your mother too? And my mom and my brothers. <laughs> and now I'd like to invite you to place this blanket around Kate's shoulders. It's a reminder and a symbol of the great love and affection of this congregation towards you and also the great love of your family. Thank you. May you continue to be a blessing to others. To Jordan, to Stephanie, and to Kate. We thank you for the many ways that you have blessed this congregation. Serving on the church council and serving as Sunday school teachers, you have all truly been a blessing to this congregation. And we pray now that you would be a blessing to this world as you go forth as graduates of 2020. Let us pray. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the end by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.